it was a few weeks. Uh, I don't know how many weeks it was, two or three weeks after I discovered where, where the whereabouts of McCarrick, that they moved him to this priory in Kansas. And so um, all of this background, I think, is relevant to what's going on right now, because in all likelihood, uh, McCarrick is not in one place. He's, he's probably being moved around. Uh, so if, if he was in Florida, uh, as, as some people believe, it's very possible that he's being moved right now to somewhere else. Yeah, that's, I mean, from what you discovered last year, my guess is if he was in Florida, and I, both of us have a lot of, you know, inside tips that he did go to Florida, he may not be there. In fact, I talked to someone yesterday who said that uh, there's a, a lot, he has a lot of friends in Florida, and there's a lot of access to private jets in Florida. But, you know, also, as, you know, you discussed, I think, with James Bryan at one point, you know, where is McCarrick's money parked? It's parked in the Caribbean. It's parked in uh, Turks and Caicos. And uh, so it, it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past McCarrick to be uh, in the Caribbean somewhere or or even on Turks and Caicos. Yeah, I, 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 I've heard that the Cardinals have parked, including McCarrick. They parked their money in the Caribbean and they parked their money in Cuba. Now, James Grind said, uh, he said on my show and he said to you that Early on, McCarrick had access to the Hilton money. In fact, he even received an inheritance from the Hilton. So if that's the case, he could be sitting on millions of dollars. You know, and is, is he going to try to distribute this money to his cardinal nephews? We should probably talk about his cardinal nephews. Um, what do you think about the money? Yeah. Apparently he has I mean, a lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we know from that. Washington Post report that he had 600, you know, he, he distributed $600,000 to uh, influential churchmen uh, from just one, one account, one uh, right. phony Arch, Archbishop special fund account. Special. So that, you know, that is, that's just one account. And then James Grine has said that whenever he was with, or often when he was with McCarrick, McCarrick was always handing out these white envelopes of, with cash inside. Yep. And so all that, you know, who knows where that was coming from. But I, I, I think, yeah, I think we can say with confidence that in, uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, probably Turks and Caicos, there's there's a McCarrick offshore account with tens of millions of dollars in it. And, and Grine, of course, thinks that some of the money – uh, was stolen from uh, State Department grants to Catholic charities. That's right. You know, and, and one thing that Grant and I didn't cover, but since then I've thought about, that is all these envelopes that were stuffed with cash. Uh, they were given to Jewets in, in Rome for audiences for with John Paul II. Uh, he said they were given to secular people. They were given to bishops, monsignors, cardinals, all that. To get that, I mean, you and I don't have piles of hundreds in our homes. <laughs> no one does that, right? So in order to have access to this much free cash, it does suggest some form of laundering. Some of these guys like Bransfield, like it came out that Bransfield spent millions and millions of dollars on renovations to his house. And that, you know, that money was coming from... Uh, was it coming from a crooked hospital that, that Bransfield oversaw? And, and it, it, it was coming from various uh, accounts that were very murky. And um, I, I think a lot of these churchmen can convince themselves that whenever they fundraise, that they're, you know, that they deserve like a finder's fee. Yeah, when I found out that Whirl was living in this uh, embassy row penthouse, and, and uh, which probably costs like $14 million, something like that, mm -hmm. which McCarrick, by the way, uh, he started that. He, he, uh, he occupied the embassy row penthouse before World did, and he made renovations to it. Uh, and God knows how much McCarrick and World spent on renovations to that penthouse. I bet, I bet it would rival the amount of money that Bransfield spent on his place in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. But I do, I, I do think that, yeah, two stories that, that need to be done are, one, the McCarrick years in Puerto Rico, and mm. two, uh, McCarrick's offshore account in Turks and Caicos, and why Turks and Caicos, why was Turks and Caicos absorbed into the Archdiocese of Newark? 
We know that's we know that for a fact. Yeah, that's a strange we, thing. We know that Turks and Caicos got gerrymandered into the Archdiocese of Newark at the time when McCarrick was the Archbishop. So why did that happen? I'll tell you, know, you why. So they could get diocesan accounts to flow so that yeah. money could go down there. That's why. You know, we need to know about these things. We need to learn about them. Um, we need to be able to discuss them with people who are anti-Catholic, Protestants, discuss them with people who are wanting to leave Catholicism because of these things. So we have to be aware. We have to be educated. That's why the work that George does is so important. And that's why I support George. But that right there has to sometimes, well, all the time be bracketed. And you have to focus on what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. What does it mean to be a Catholic? How do I receive the Eucharist? Am I in a state of grace? Do I need to go to confession? How much time am I spending day reading the Bible or praying? Or am I doing the rosary? Am I getting slothful and lazy? This daily examine of your conscience needs to be happening. Otherwise, you're just not going to make it. It's very discouraging on the on the surface level, the trappings. It's very discouraging. So you really got to dig down deep and find Christ adore him, know him, grow in him. Otherwise, you're going to wither up.